Happy Monday, everyone. This is Martha with Nature Niche. And uh, this weekend, I'm gonna be working on doing some long overdue invasive species control in my front ditch uh, using a technique that I've been wanting to share with you for a while. So I learned this as the um, bloody glove herbicide technique. Um, it's probably more accurately named uh, chemical uh, glove treatment or hand wicking. Um, it also goes by the glove of death um, or healing hand, depending on uh, how, how nice or um, ferocious you, you want to sound. But it's basically a targeted hand swiping technique, a way to apply herbicide. Um, and it's really a, a great way to work in an area that has a lot of good native vegetation and you're trying to treat very hard to pull um, invasive species vegetation that's kind of intermixed with all of the, the good species that you want to keep. So it is a very targeted, controlled, kind of minimal um, herbicide application technique with uh, the least amount of um, adverse impact to non-target vegetation. And for this, I, you know, anytime I'm using herbicide, I just want to reiterate, please, please read the herbicide label for whatever products that you're using. Um, make sure you're working on very still, non-windy days, that you're following the label, um, and that you're using the, the proper techniques and proper personal protective equipment or PPE. So uh, for what I'll be working with today, I read the label and um, for that, I need to um, have two kinds of gloves. So for this hand wicking um, or chemical glove treatment, you basically are taking um, a chemical resistant uh, nitrile, that's what this is, or latex glove. And then um, on your dominant hand, whatever hand you wanna be swiping the plant with, uh, you place a jersey knit or cotton glove over that. And if you're having trouble, definitely check the fit uh, before you go out and try to do this technique. If you're having trouble getting that second glove on, you can lop off the fingertips uh, to make that an easier fit. Um, as far as other PPE, um, Again, I'll be using uh, aquatic labeled glyphosate as the active ingredient, non-selective herbicide, and that called for um, safety glasses, long sleeves, long pants, closed toed shoes and socks. Uh, if you like, you can wear um, a face mask and other herbicide products may require other things. If you're gonna be in really dense vegetation and doing a lot of hand swiping where it might rub up against your clothing, you might consider um, a Tyvek, a chemical resistant jumpsuit over your um, normal clothing. So one of the things I learned um, as I was kind of diving into the nuances of this technique uh, as a preparatory thing, uh, first time before using your uh, jersey knit or cotton glove, you do want to wash them. Um, and that's to help get all the like manufacturing residue off of them uh, and help them to be uh, less water resistant and as absorbing as possible um, to hold the chemical. And you wanna treat these gloves, the latex gloves and all of your herbicide equipment um, well and keep it clean. And these gloves, if you do plan to reuse rather than just dispose of them, um, you should wash them. You can use the rinseate um, from your herbicide uh, like spray bottle. Um, that that w wastewater, you can add detergent and you wanna wash these several times. You never wanna put these in the washing machine like with your normal kind of herbicide exposed clothing. These have lots of exposure. You're holding the herbicide in your hand and you wanna make sure you wash and um, rinse several times and wring out and hang dry and just keep it separate from your normal uh, clothing. So before we dive into the actual treatment technique, I think it's important to kind of have your workspace set up. So you will need an equipment um, filling and cleaning station, 
That can be located in your basement, a garage, a driveway, or for me, I have it set up in the same place as my waste area. And that's where we'll be dumping the um, wash water and rinse uh, from working the chemicals out of the, the gloves and the equipment when we're um, all done. So you wanna make sure anytime you're you know, handling herbicides that you keep it away from living areas. You don't wanna use your kitchen sink where you're preparing food away from your gardens, your ornamental and native landscape plantings, um, pet areas, places where children are, um, and your main wildlife zone. So the best place on our property, we have this sort of gravelly um, access drive uh side to our to our backyard it is away from our wildlife feeding area it is away from my native plantains it's vegetation if i get a little herbicide on it and it dies i'm not going to be heartbroken um, but it is a place where uh the, the rinse water um, can can go and come in contact with mineral soil and it's important um, for that for the herbicide to, to bind with the mineral soil and be broken down by microorganisms. You don't ever want to dump your wash water or rinse it with herbicide in it um, down a sink, into a storm sewer, um, into your septic system. Those are not safe places. Pick a gravel driveway or parking lot or kind of weedy vegetated area um, where that water can soak into the soil um, and not come into immediate contact with uh, surface or groundwater. Um, you want to make sure that if you're storing chemicals, you do that safely. Again, read the herbicide label and make sure you label uh, what things are, the ingredients, the concentrations, that sort of thing. Um, and that you dilute your wastewater uh, before disposing of it. So you wanna use as little water doing the washing as possible uh, just not to, to not have a lot of waste to deal with, but then dilute that two to three times the volume so that um, it is dispersed as you um, apply it in, in the landscape. And as far as equipment goes, um, I have my cleaning area kind of already prepped before I even dive into the treatment. So I have a bucket with warm um, soapy water. I just used dish soap and I have Toothbrush makes a great, you know, designate it for this herbicide tool cleaning purpose, but makes a great um, cleaning tool. And then I have a spare bucket just to catch as I'm running um, soapy water through my squirt bottle. Um, I have a bucket that I can uh, put that soapy um, wash water, kind of waste water into. And then I have two buckets with just water for uh, doing a double rinse. So I'm all um, set up for that. So you want to, um, when you're cleaning your bottle, uh, take, take it apart and soak it in the soapy water. You can take the toothbrush and scrub, like nozzles tend to get gunked up um, or the intake part. Uh, on that, I should have my safety glasses on for this too. Make sure you're doing that. And then yeah, I use the, the toothbrush to get any gunky areas. And then um, it helps to fill the bottle part way, just a quarter or a third. And then close it up and agitate it. Take that up and then spray into your waste area. You can see the water coming out pretty blue from the last tractor that I used. Looks like it's coming out clear now. And so once you've done that, then do the double rinse. Okay. 
And then uh, you'll let these items air dry. Do the same thing with your nitrile gloves. If you'll be reusing them, um, wash really thoroughly with the soapy water, double rinse um, and hang dry. And uh, then um, add more water, add volume, and then apply that, that wastewater to um, your waste disposal area. So after your equipment is all washed, you wanna make sure you wash your gloves and your shoes um, thoroughly. So you can use the uh, soapy water, uh, do that double rinse before you uh, remove them. And then you definitely wanna change your clothes as soon as possible after you've done the treatment. If you're not putting them right into the washing machine, put them into a plastic bag or container just to um, not cross contaminate. And you wanna wash and rinse, um, make sure you rinse twice. And if you've been um, kind of moderate to heavy exposure, working in like a really vegetated area, uh, run your clothes through the washing machine warm um, twice and then double rinse. And um, you wanna run your machine on empty before you do a normal load of clothing and hang drying the clothing is best and that way they're not um, in, your, in your dryer at all. It's always good to um, kind of before you can get to a shower, at least wash your hands, forearms, um, face, any other place maybe that um, had been exposed with warm soapy water um, and then just take that shower as soon as possible uh, to be as safe as possible when using herbicides. So because I'm treating um, in a, a roadside ditch on my property, I wanted to make sure I was using an aquatic formulated herbicide. Um, I'm doing non-selective uh, so that I can treat broadleaf or um, monocot uh, grass species. And um, this has uh, glyphosate as the active ingredient at a concentration of 53.8%. So I worked with uh, some professional herbicide applicators to help me understand kind of what's a great um, and correctly calculated formulated mix. Whatever you choose um, will dictate and the label, those directions will dictate um, what uh, and how you will mix your herbicide solution. So for treating things like Phragmites or common reed, reed canary gra grass, uh, Phalaris arundinacea, and invasive um, narrow leaf and hybrid cattail, typha and gustifolia and hybrid glauca. Um, this is what I came up with. Your local um, uh, cooperative invasive species management coordinator, area coordinator could help you with calculations, um, county extension surface, things like that could definitely help. Um, or you can hire a professional herbicide applicator. So for today, I'll be using um, a glyphosate, aquatic labeled glyphosate mix. I am doing, um, I'm gonna mix in a little one gallon sprayer because I know I need um, one gallon and I'll probably be doing some spot treating too. So I need one gallon of water to four ounces of this mix uh, to one ounce of, I'm using a non-ionic um, surfactant that is uh, safe and that helps the herbicide stick and break through leaf cuticle, but is safe for use in aquatic environments and then just like half an ounce You don't need much of this blue tracker dye, but that helps you see where you have swiped So as you're mixing these things together do it in a spill containment area uh, Carefully make sure you're wearing all of your PPE so here we are um, in my ditch location. I have waited until there's no standing water. Um, if you are going to be applying herbicides uh, adjacent to over uh, standing water, you need an aquatic nuisance control permit from um, Eagle in the state of Michigan. And it's definitely something I think that's better left to uh, the herbicide professionals. Um, but I've waited till uh, summertime. It's all dried out. Nonetheless, I'm using the aquatic formula herbicide. To do the um, hand swiping, I'm all set up with my two kinds of gloves and I just spray the herbicide um, into my wicking glove. Make sure it's good and saturated. 
and then you start down at the base of the plant. This is a cattail, a hybrid cattail or narrow leaf cattail that I don't want in my ditch area. And then I just swipe the herbicide up the stem, getting um, as much of the plant as you can um, from top to bottom. And then I'm working around some iris and some sedges that I want to leave in place. I also have some reed canary grass. So I will repeat that, spraying into the glove and using the swiping technique to get the reed canary grass. So that's pretty much it. Uh, everything I think you really need to know about using uh, the hand wicking or the bloody glove technique. I hope this helps you manage invasive species, especially where you're working around other good native vegetation in your own landscapes. Thanks and have a good week.